juices. We we in okay. here. Okay. Yeah, I'm like, I know we're supposed to be talking about painting the vision. I'm like, but I'm just going to just part just part just part have a conversation. Okay. It's part yeah, of the vision. Like, to me, this is part of the vision. Like, like, for me, being raised Baptist and understanding the Bible and still reverencing the Bible for most of my thoughts, mm -hmm. um, it's clearly safe that where there is no vision, the people perish. Right. So where have we, have we moved off of having vision for our people? We have... Um, we have different times where people were like, you know what? We were separate but equal, and they were cool with that. Right. They were like, right. look, we got our black doctors, we got our black. Sisters, you know, black that's that was a strong point Man. For, for black folks. When things were segregated, we had businesses. Black Wall Street was booming. Everything was booming. It was when integration happened yeah. that stuff started to get broken down, and that's just the fact of the matter. Um, I don't know. My daddy talked about that. He's the one that brought that up to me first. He was like, you know, there's always black people who feel like we need to integrate with the white people. And and I was like, mm -hmm. at first I was kind of like, where is this man coming from with this? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think about it, I was like, if there's two thoughts on what happened. First thought is, if we all had our own stuff and we didn't mm -hmm. say, but for maybe a business transaction, mm -hmm. we experience the same norm. Mm. That's one thing. That's a good question. Yeah. Another thought I have is, are we dealing with a timing issue? Whereas the white America that our parents and our grandparents and our great grandparents knew, mm -hmm. is starting to die off. Mm -hmm. Or are they still creating? And because I would say that these younger white people are more culturally influenced by us as black people, but yeah. they still carry the same thoughts of their grandparents right i think there is a definite underlying tone as far as like when you're born white you're already born into privilege yeah. so much so that you don't even recognize your opportunities or advantages that you already have that's just you'd probably some a lot of like a lot of white people don't even recognize it i think mm -hmm. um but when you're raised and born into that i think there's also a different dynamic of either they are presented with like white supremacy direct head on, like this is what we stand for or indirectly, like, or these are just our standards. These are just our principles. These are just, you know, things that mm -hmm. we are, which represent us. So with those two different dynamics, I think um, either it's directly like a oh, white, white power, whatever, like you, right. you see them in the streets, there's, there's yeah. the white nationalists, yeah. all that stuff. So um, I don't know. Sometimes I think it's ingrained in them mm -hmm. from, from jump or it's indirect just based on their society, their communities. And a lot of people, a lot of white folks don't have interaction with black people. What they see is on TV. Yeah. They see the reality shows, they see the entertainment and that's all they know. And that's all they, you know, that's the perception. That's why I think it's so important for people in the roles that they have in entertainment, sports, what have you. I think it's important for them to set a, a standard, an example, like you talked about the Bible, like the Bible says, to whom much is given, much is required. Yeah. If you're going to hold that position, it's important for you to set that standard and represent us good. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, yeah, we are our great people, you know what I mean? And uh, unfortunately, we, we get, we get yeah. the dog end of it, you know what I mean? Like, it's, it's, it's bad, you know? So um, I think this, in order for change to happen, a revolution must happen. And I think that that's what's happening right now. Um, and there are casualties of war. There are people that are going to die. There are people that are going to be harmed. There are businesses that are going to burn. There, you know, it is, it's necessary for change to happen. But uh, right now, we do have a leader who is. I can't stand it. Man. Okay, I'm looking go ahead. for my light real quick, and then we'll okay. go live because okay. I'm the time. One of the things that um, I think about that too is that we look at President Trump, and true, he is a voice. I would say he's mm -hmm. a voice for America. Mm -hmm. But the leadership is in that Congress. Mm -hmm. And those people been in leadership for some of them 30, 40, 50 Man, years. They old as hell. Like, so you, when you <laughs> think things ain't changing, we got right. the same people who make exactly. the law. Exactly. exactly. And, and so everybody wants to go run to the presidential election. I'm like, nah, that's not the election you need to run to. Right, exactly. You're you local. Yes, mm -hmm. you, gotta, you, gotta like, know, you gotta know your local, What you gotta know what governs what. Right, exactly. Your local, your county, mm -hmm. your state. Your state, 
Yep. And then you and then Congress. Right. If we don't have people in position, and that's why right. I say that's I feel like that's my lane. Right. Because when I sit at these tables and I'm, I'm probably going, I'm going to need to get some nasty so I don't cry because I think okay. I'm going to cry. That's all good. Um, <laughs> I watch them take the privilege away from black people, black mm -hmm. men and black women for mm -hmm. med school and give the advantage to non-black. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And these are black folk. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I'm going, wait, wait, wait. This is part of the problem. Right. It's systematically, it's, it's so enrooted. Like you got to break down all of that. Like you said, people in Congress that are still, they can't even see. Like, what are you still doing holding that seat? You don't right. even know what's going on. You are so right. far, like you detached from what was really going on in today's. Um, and, and you didn't feel like we need to bring nobody else up. Like that's right. another part of people get, they get accustomed to that leadership. They get accustomed yeah. to that money. They get accustomed yeah. to that lifestyle. And they right. don't want to put nobody else in that position. Exactly. Exactly. Yep. Well, maybe your time has passed. Right. You know, that, that power, holding power, um, mm. there's money behind that. There's so mm. much money. There's, there's things that we don't see that we don't know. There's issues. There's all type of corruption. I'm yeah. like, whenever you see a group of white haired men, huh. There's corruption. I don't care. Wow. I do not care. I do not care. Like that's it's good. That's good. Okay, let me get grab one thing. I'll be right back. Okay. I'm trying to see if it's here. If not, we can only just move it out. Okay. My life. You're good. Girl, I hit my ankle. Uh oh. <laughs> oh. Like, oh, Jesus. Okay. Did she? Oh, here we go. Found it. Yay. Okay. I think I got a little juice. And then we're going to get, this is so exciting. I'm, especially, I'm just, I'm grateful for you taking this moment with me to go like, you know what? Yes. I'm on press three. Yeah. Press um, three. This is actually, I've only been on live. I want to say this is my second time being on live. What? Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't know. I like to keep, like I use Instagram and social platforms to promote business and stuff like that. Um, but, you know, I have to. I have to say something. I have to speak out about stuff like this. And I have to, I don't know, I guess, unless people kind of know who I am. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, more and, than a, more than a barber, more than an artist. You know what I mean? I, right. Okay, so this is where we've been, you've been serving. And part of the reason I want to talk to you mm -hmm. is about your personal journey in illumination. Okay. You know, your, your journey in get going higher. Okay. You know, um, just you want me to give you a little background, uh, where I come from and all yep. that good stuff. So okay. now I'm plugging in one more device and then we're going to, um, gonna go live. We're going to go live. Boom. Okay. This has been so juicy. <laughs> okay. Okay. I want to turn this light off though. Okay. Perfect. Girl, you see the background of what it looks like. I just had some shelves installed. Mm -hmm. it's crazy. Did you just paint that wall or was it always like going, this has been painted since I got here? Okay. By the grace of God, I thought my house was supposed to be earth tone. Uh-huh. And of course, you know, being a visionary, I put it up and I, I was doing samples. I was like, this ain't it. And mm -hmm. thank God I had grabbed these blues. They're like, oh, these look kind of cute. Yeah, I like it. And I was like, oh dog, this is yeah. it. Yeah, I like it. Well, with that mirror too, that trim. Right. Mm -hmm. I was like the total, and that's part of to me, that's the envision. Being a visionary, you have to go with what you see. You know, mm -hmm. and when you when you see something that you don't agree with, you gotta make a strides to change it. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. um, communicate the vision to others. Let's go. We're going next. I'm going to Facebook now. You can, can you still hear me and see me? Yes. Yep. Okay. Perfect. I'm going to live stream and okay. set it up. So I I put it on my Facebook, uh, my Instagram. Okay. That they so can you can do in. both at the same time? Um, I have okay. tried before. It hasn't been successful. Okay. So um, what I do now is I just um, stream in. And I got a set of headphones here in case the audio gets crazy. Okay. So if you're like, I can't hear you. Um, dialogue. Hold on one second. Dialogue. So. Yeah. Maintain the vision. Mm. 
And so what, um, if, they, if you can't hear me at some point in time, then just mm -hmm. let me know and I'll uh, throw these headphones in here. Okay. And, uh, and then what I look for is the audience comments also. Okay, make so sure. They, like as they could like, uh, wait for a couple people to come on. Okay. And then as they um, come on, and if, as they comment, I'll, you know, I'll interject a couple of times as we dialogue. Okay, let me grab. Just us having the good old chat as we typically do. Okay. Let me grab a little book. Do we start? Are you about to go on right now? It's coming on. Okay. Hey, you can grab it though. Cool. Okay. Well, let me grab this. Yeah. Okay. I'm checking in to see if we are live. I think we are. We live, baby. <laughs> yes, we are live. Okay. Oh, we are live. We are live. Okay. Hey, uh, hey, everyone. This is Dialogue with Mo featuring Miss Sandy. Hey, and, hello. Uh, Ten dollars. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and um, we are. Ex I'm excited to have this conversation with you. Um, as you come on, please share. I'm going to share. Um, this dialogue in one other place and um, share it with your friends, uh, share it. it, it, it uh, what we do is record. You'll be able to see this on my Facebook page for the okay. rest of the week and going forward. And then we transfer to YouTube and you'll see a snippet also. Okay. Can so, I put it on my? Absolutely. absolutely. IG? Okay. Absolutely. So um, let's see. I'm posting. I'm going to send you the link. Now, let me open this up so I can see who's on. We got a few people that joined us. Let me see if I can see you on. And we just want to say hi. So as you come in, say hi to the people. Hi, people. Hi, people. Hello. Hello. Hi, I am. So this is an exciting time. We are uh, we're talking about painting the vision. And the great thing about today is that in the climate we're in, like LA right now, I think Long Beach has a curfew of 4 o'clock. LA wow. has a curfew. Yeah. Uh, many other cities. We have seen the unrest. We have seen the pissivity. Mm. We've seen the <laughs> revolt. We've mm -hmm. seen everything you want to call it. We we even say we've seen the looting. We've seen the protesting. Yeah. Um. And that has weighed on the people. Mm -hmm. And so it's actually I feel like this the the topic of vision is perfectly timed. So for those that are joining us, like I said, if you have anything you want to share, please um join in. Dialogue with Mo is unscripted. It is candid. Um, I'm quite sure you're going to get some chuckles out of here, get some knowledge mm -hmm. and more. But first, I'm going to let Miss Sandy introduce herself and tell Hello. us a little bit about you. Oh, wow. Okay. Where do I begin? Um, my name is Sandra Riley, but I'm known as Sandy Sandalas. People just create nicknames. It doesn't matter. But, um, well, I am, well, let me see. I'm a native of California. I'm originally from uh, Oceanside, San Diego, California. Mm -hmm. I've lived in the LA area since 1998 by way of going to Cal State Long Beach. Um, Beach. Yeah, go Beach. Um, whew, I finished school, graduated 2006 mm -hmm. um, with a bachelor's degree in art. Um, was an art major, didn't go, to, didn't go to Long Beach State as an art major, went as a psychology major, was still trying to figure Yay. out. Went as a psychology major, was trying to figure out what I wanted to do, but I've been an artist since I was a kid. Used wow. to sit in, my, sit in my room for hours, drawing, uh, listening to the radio, drawing and stuff mm -hmm. for hours. Um, but um, I always had that artistic side of me. Okay. Uh, it wasn't until I got to college, I was trying to figure out what I wanted to do. Changed my major probably two or three more times. Mm -hmm. So I decided, okay, I'm gonna do that art major okay, I'm going to do a graphic design. So that's kind of the field that I went into when I graduated college in 2006, uh, went into the field of graphic design, uh, worked for a marketing company in Lake Forest. Um, and we did uh, websites, brochures, pamphlets. Um, most of our clientele was uh, banks and credit unions. Mm -hmm. And when 2008 recession hit, yeah. we lost so many of our clients. So one of our major clients was IndyMac Bank. Wow. Um, and when they folded, it was like a dominant. Do you remember Andy Mac? Yeah, I'm like, it doesn't even, yeah, it, they, they fell, they fell apart. Once, wow. once that 2008, uh, the crisis hit where they had the subprime loans and all that, um, it just was a domino effect. So we lost client after client after client, everything fell apart. 
and they started doing rounds of layoffs. I was laid off in the third round of layoffs and mm. I was like, what am I going to do? Right. I sent out probably like a hundred resumes uh, for design jobs, art jobs, didn't get one call back because um, there was no jobs. You right. know, people, everybody was broke. Kind of sounds um, like right now, right? Right, right. It's, it's, it's a little different. This is a little more extreme, I think. Yeah. Um, but um, so after that, I was like, you know what? I need to do something else. I need to find something that's recession proof. Um, I had a friend of mine that was going to barber school and he was like, you, just, you should just come check it out. You ain't got nothing else to do. I'm like, okay. So collected my little unemployment and registered to go to school. And mm -hmm. here I am today since 2008. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I never had cut hair before in my life, never picked up any clippers or anything. And um, I just took to it because I already had that art background. So mm -hmm. cutting hair is, is an art form. You know what I mean? It's, yeah. it's yeah. you know, it's sculpting and designing and you kind of see the vision and you, you work with a different medium, which is hair. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. yeah. So I've been cutting hair since 2008. Um, and now I'm kind of taking a different direction. So this is where we are today. We're going to get into yeah. that. Yeah. I say hi to people. I see Miss Wanda logged on. I see Hanifa. Hey, Hanifa. Hey, Toya. Hey, Soror. Um, I see a few others just saying hi. Uh, wow. But I'm glad you said that because you went to school for one thing, mm -hmm. came out in another. Mm -hmm. And then had a transition, major transition when the economy crashed. Mm -hmm. And because of your understanding of vision, like you mm -hmm. said, it was just a different medium. Mm -hmm. Medium. Mm -hmm. You went from paint, from computer arts to hair. Mm -hmm. And now tell us where you shifting, where you see yourself shifting now. Uh, well, right now, I'm kind of. I want to tell. I tell people that I'm retiring from barbering. Um, but it's, it's, a, it's, I, <laughs> He's like, I need my <laughs> it's, it's been a slow transition. So, um, I've been cutting like Fridays and Saturdays and then, you know, I don't cut all day. I just kind of, you know, I'm kind of phasing it out. Um, I started feeling like it was time for me to, to make a shift, um, about a year ago. And I was like, okay, mm -hmm. I, I'm, I'm, I'm over it. I'm over it. You know what I mean? Like I love my clients. I have a really solid clientele to where it's like, they're kind of like friends in a way. Right. And it's kind of interesting, the dynamic of, of being a barber, because you have a lot of different hats that you wear. You know about, I know a lot about people's lives, but we don't necessarily hang out or talk on the phone. No. But it's like that moment when they're in the chair. Um, it's, it's a therapy session. Mm -hmm. I have people sometimes that just sit down. They're like, hey, what's up? Sit down and just start talking. And I'm like, okay. Like I got to kind of put aside my, my stuff. If I'm having a bad day or whatever, I put it aside and I, you know, I let them get their stuff out. And when they're done with the haircut, they feel better most of the time. So, um, but yeah, so now I guess I'm kind of like in a, in a mode where um, I've been doing a lot more painting, um, been doing a lot more commission pieces, logos, um, kind of going back to my, my, <laughs> my roots of graphic design mm -hmm. and, um, I'm not even going to transition into doing that full time. I'm actually inventing a couple um, products. Mm -hmm. So barbering has led me into an avenue of um, making a lot of different connections and, and, and ideas. The hair industry is like a $43 billion industry. And that's that again, 43, $43 billion. billion. So you got to see all the areas from, from weaves to hair care products to um, it's, it's beyond the chair. So I, I kind of want to tap into the industry beyond cutting the actual physical cutting hair. Cause as we get older, it's like you start feeling little aches and pains and stuff like that. I mean, I've been behind the chair since 2008 and I'm like, I'm not about to die behind this chair. Mm. Um, so as I, I Kind of has some ideas. I uh, I hold um I hold a patent right now for a keychain that I invented in two, 2015, mm -hmm. and that kind of sparked um, the idea to con concept idea to actual product thought in my brain. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, okay, now I see what I can do with this little keychain. I was able to manifest something that I had as an idea, as a drawing on paper, and I and I made it a reality. Mm -hmm. So. What else can I do? And I have ideas all the time. People have ideas all the time. If you think about the world that we live in, like this Zoom was an idea. Yeah. And now here it is, we're using this platform, you know, this, this computer, you know, all this technology, all the things that we have in the world were once an idea. So um, I had an idea. I'll tell you about two of my other ideas. So I have a patent for the keychain. Now I have two provisional patents for um, things I'm working on. One is um, a mobile barber chair. 
And that is, is kind of in transition in, in, cause I have a prototype for it. I'm actually sitting in it right now and I have some changes that oh. I want to make. Yeah. So this is, oh, I, don't know if I, yeah. I don't know if you can see it, but this is, yeah. Oh. So it's got a headrest, it reclines, it swivels. It's, um, I just need to put a foot rest on it. So that's one of my, um, ideas. Another one is, um, my a neck duster that is a disposable neck duster so it's appropriate for this climate today uh, you, mm. you you dispose of the bristles after each use so you're not cross-contaminating between clients that's so that's yeah, yeah that's actually a production right now so i'm getting some 3d models created for it but trying to see it through to the end so okay hold on i have, have, yeah. to, I have, to, I have to do some correction real quick oh okay because i don't remember thank you Get, turn it all the way off for now. Thank you. All right. Um, this is the last week of school. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> That's dope. And I like that. Yeah. Wow. I like what you said beyond the chair. Mm -hmm. And I think that when you, and then you talked about um, the idea, having an idea and going from idea to manifestation. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I think, like you said, that kind of shifting into where we at in this time, mm -hmm. I want to make sure our people don't lose their ideas yes i think i think now is a wonderful time if you ever had a th idea or a plan or something that you're like they should come out with this now is a perfect time like i'm like during quarantine everybody was forced to sit down yeah stop stop moving sit down stay in the house um you know what i mean you have time to read you have time to write you have time to cultivate ideas to dialogue uh, platforms like this can spark so many ideas mm. um it's just following it through yeah follow through everybody can have that ideas it's just the follow-through part so i think yeah writing it down your vision write down yeah. the vision and manifest it bring it to life um and knowing that there's steps in between and connections between. and people. right right and and, right. and some courage mm -hmm. and some oh yeah <laughs> oh yeah if it doesn't if it doesn't make you afraid like if it if you don't have any fear in it then like it's there's not that there's something wrong but the fear should is is part of it it's kind of like it is a scary thing to kind of transition because i'm like i'm telling people like i'm about to transition to a whole nother not really a career yeah i'm not kind of here anymore i'm about to go into this and i and just to trust it i've had so many fa failure is a part of the journey Mm. I've had failures. I've had two dissolved businesses where I have an idea and I run with it. I learn how to create the business, create the LLC. Okay. Do, um, get your articles of incorporation. Okay. And then the business fails, mm. you know, whatever. Um, okay. Or to success is what I've learned. Exactly. Exactly. So you learn from that. Okay. I made a mistake here. You learn from your mistakes, you move on and you get better. Um, but that's part of the journey. Um, yeah. So. Wow. Okay. So, <laughs> uh, well, so, I'm, I'm looking at the people. Hey, mom, my mom joined in. If you have any questions, if you have any um, things that you want to run past Sandra as we're talking um, and just exploring um, more into vision, please like, share, comment. We are paying attention. So um, one of the things I want to share in, um, in the state of transparency San, uh, Sandy and I had a, it's hard for me to call you Sandy. Can you, you can call me Sandra. It's like, more, I, yeah, you can call you know, me Sandra. So let me yeah. tell you, normally I call her okay. Spesh. Spesh mm -hmm. means Special Zeta. She was my Special Zeta when she was at Cal State uh, Long Beach. Had the privilege of mentoring, um, friending, and we lived in the same building for years, to be quite honest. Yep. yep. Um, so connection running deep. And, um, and you actually, I remember the very first, <laughs> okay, the very first logo that Sandra created for me. I was selling uh, cupcakes. This was before okay. I started with my beauty business, and I was um, totally cupcakes, happy uh -huh. cakes. We found a name for them because they have a little alcohol content in them. Uh -huh. <laughs> and, uh, and I remember creating this design, and you was like, let me help you. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going, and I don't know if people understand, like, to me, visionaries and people with vision are, to me, important. They're on, they're on a higher level of importance in my life. Not just because I love you and know you over these years, but because, I mean, <laughs> I'm not going to get into that, but you even called me on a relationship. I was like, hey, do you know this, this, and that? <laughs> and I was like, you know what I was wondering, thank you. You Conf need people. Confirmation. Right? Yeah, yeah. Everybody has a, has a role. You know what I mean? Everybody plays their part. And some people have intuition. 
Yes. Some people have visions. Some people, you know what I mean? So it's like we form together like Voltron. It's, it's a beautiful thing. <laughs> and I think that is where I am. I feel like if you, if I, at this place in my life, if I come into your life um, or where we connect it, it is about bringing order and structure. That's mm -hmm. what I do. It's about taking you to your next, whatever that may be. Mm -hmm. um, but that's because I've, I've been in the trenches to learn that about myself. Mm -hmm. And so I do challenge those who want to stay stuck. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I don't believe in staying stuck. Yeah. Yeah. I believe in getting the vision. Yeah. Oh. I, I'll labor in the vision mm -hmm. until I understand it. Mm -hmm. You know, call some people in like, um, I had this, this, I'm in the process of like, um, getting my home in sit situated. I had to call a friend and like, Hey, I need vision. Cause okay. I didn't have it for myself. Okay. She was like, um, do what about this, this and that? And I was like, yo, I can see that. Mm -hmm. So what I do, I call a person with the hands to do it. Thank you, okay. Pedro. Pedro just left. Okay. <laughs> put shelves in, put my shelves up and, mm -hmm. and order starting to come back. So I think it's sometimes important that we, I think it is definitely important for connection. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Tap into your resources. Utilize your resources. I don't know how many times I've heard that from way back, way back <laughs> in the day. Gotta utilize your resources. And you'd be surprised just by having conversation with people, um, even like from barbering, cutting hair. I, you meet so many people. My clientele is like, expand, like there's people I have, financial advisors. I have people that ha are business owners, people that, you know, everybody has a category. And I, I had an idea, like, I want to bring everybody together so they can co-mingle yeah. and, and people can utilize each other as, oh, wait, you do this. Oh, wait, you make websites. Like, that's important. Yeah. Like, there's so many resources out there that we can help each other, especially within the Black community. I think it's important for us to help each other. Ooh. And good. so the, 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 the audience was not privy. Hey, Malika, the audience was not privy to our prior conversations. We were talking okay. about the Black community yeah. and talking about the death of George um, Floyd talking about um, the, the deaths that occurred during the quarantine mm -hmm. and just the fed upness yeah. and, and in the spirit of people hurting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think there's some of us that are very sensitive, yeah. not to the anger, mm -hmm. but to the hurt. The hurt, the yeah. hurt. And trying to process that, like, what are your outlets? What are your coping mechanisms? Mm -hmm. um, I think, I, like I was telling you earlier, like I've just been on a roller coaster of emotions to where I do feel anger, I feel sadness, I feel just blah, like I don't, I don't even have a word for it at times where I just feel like I'm not, I had to tell you I'm not in the headspace, I'm like, I don't know if I could do the Zoom, I'm not feeling it, like, but that was yesterday, today is a new day, so I, I do feel a lot better, but um, it's a lot, emotionally it's a lot, like, you know what I mean, and I was reading something that was like, you know, make, make sure you tap in with your strong people and know that like, okay, they still got to function and go to work and put a smile on their face because they're in the office and they have to interact with other people. And it's like, no, I don't feel like smiling. I don't feel like doing this. And like knowing that it's okay. It's yeah. okay to take some time off. It's okay to, you know, you know, um, you had a mental health day. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. yeah. I remember the first time I took a mental health day at my last job and the people kind of looked at me with their eyes open. But I had literally gotten to my wits end of dealing with mm -hmm. just poor, I'm going to call it pettiness, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. low level vibrations. Yep. Oh yeah. And the way I understand life, I look at things from a more spiritual background. Mm -hmm. So I'm not just doing I'm not just journeying in my flesh and in the now and what people can see. I'm journeying right. in the spirit. Right. And so I may, I'm like dealing with crap. <laughs> From a spiritual level, a, a physical level. Yeah. 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 Emotional. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it's like, I was like, I need a moment. Yep. And they were like, wait, what? Wait, what? <laughs> yeah. And but so how people, often do people put that, put your emotions aside and, okay, let me just power through and you know what I mean it's like it's okay to deal with that hurt as a matter of fact it's important to deal with that hurt you know what I mean yeah I think that's it that's where we are now is that um when the dust settles because mm -hmm. let's tell the truth the dust always settles mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah what next right do you have a vision for what's next right we have to right. have a vision beyond burning and tearing shit up yeah yep 
Yeah, um, but like we were talking about earlier, yeah. I think it's three groups. There's people that are fighting for change, the people who are behind the Black Lives, uh, move, Black Lives Matter movement yeah. that want the change and that are peacefully protesting, but they're met with agitation and aggravation, be it from the police, be mm -hmm. it from anarchists, people who are trying to incite riots, people who just want to steal stuff. Yeah. Um, and, and then, you know, it's, it's, it's a lot. And we have to make, it known that there are those differences of people because there's people that want change and yeah. who are peacefully protesting. And then right after, like in Long Beach, I was talking to a friend who was out there and they were like, we're peacefully protesting. Now all of a sudden people started breaking into H and M, you right. know what I mean? And that had nothing to do with the, the, right the, protest. the, the, the protest, but that was just some people that like, okay, there's masses of people out here. Here's our time to go steal some stuff and broke into some stuff or set the building on fire. Um, there's a dojo, um, a black, dojo down there on um seventh and pine wow self-defense studio and um one of the uh the senseis over there was she was like they of course there were no fires in long beach but of course that one had to be in my building so mm -hmm. you know what i mean it's 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 hurtful and um yeah it's 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 a lot emotionally it's a lot it's mm -hmm. a lot i want to say hi tori hey kyla hey tracy um hey malika i think i said hi to you and just Hello to all that are joining us. We're talking about Paige and um, trying to give us some of the background um, of where she is. Now we're kind of just diving into the, co the, the climate for today. And um, one of the things that I saw, I saw a CNN um, interview. Mm -hmm. And one of the things I pulled from it, one of the organizers, he said, we're trying to raise the energy, keep the energy mm -hmm. high, mm -hmm. keep the tension low. Yes. And I was like, wow, mm -hmm. like that's a statement of vision that people can grasp to, like mm -hmm. energy high. Keep the energy high. Tension yeah. low. Tension low, because low vibrating energy, it's taxing. It'll, it'll draw you, it'll bring you down, it'll make you feel bad, it'll make you not want to get up out of bed sometimes. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's positive to have a, a good circle around you. Now, because I know you, and if you, uh -huh. if, you want, if you don't mind sharing with the people a little bit about your journey in elevating your vibration like and challenges that you've had okay okay. okay um my background i grew up in the church my dad i'm a pk my dad was a preacher um he's also a marine for 22 years uh, and then transitioned to being a preacher so the household was very strict um and as i grew older like i raised in the church i went to church on bible study on uh, Sunday, uh, teens fellowship. And then when I got older, women's Bible study. So I was always in the church. Um, when I got to college, I kind of found my own way, um, yeah. but still standing on principles of what I've been taught. Um, but now I'm more spiritually based. Um, you know, I, I burn my Palo Santo and my sage. I cleanse my spaces. I light my candles. Um, I take the moment to meditate every morning and I write, in my, I have a gratitude journal that I write in um, in the morning and at night. Yeah. And um, I try to stay out of spaces that bring my vibration low. Like if I'm interacting with somebody, I was, I was actually in a space that wasn't um, a good space for me. Mm -hmm. and, and when you find yourself in a space where it's lowering your energy, lowering your vibration, and it's making you feel bad, it's time to either disconnect yourself from the space or avoid interaction with it altogether. So if I have to separate myself from certain situations that bring my energy down, then I'll do that. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you can only take certain people and places and doses and you kind of like have to like tap into like, okay, that, that's enough. Cool. I got to move on. Like it mm -hmm. is okay to do that because self-preservation is everything. If yeah. you, if you're not all right, you can't be all right for the next person, especially if you have kids, if you have family, you know what I mean? You can't pour from an empty cup. If you're constantly giving of yourself, I'm just going now. Go ahead, flow, if you, flow, if you, girl. If, if you're constantly, <laughs> if you're constantly giving of yourself and you're constantly giving of yourself, you're, you're empty. So how can you pour into somebody? How can you even raise kids properly? Or how can you even um, encourage somebody else if you're just drained and empty all the time? So you have to make sure that you replenish yourself. So self-preservation is key. Writing down um, things, writing visions, writing ideas, just, just getting your feelings out, having conversation, dialogue, talking to people, sending yourself, but breathing, like 
really breathing, breathing, mm -hmm. consciously breathing, like, yes, taking deep breaths in, full breaths out, like centering yourself. It's important. Yes. Like we, we are made up of the earth. Mm -hmm. we, and when we die, we go back to the ground and we're back into the earth. So from the earth, we came, you know, it's a circle. So it's important to, to, to tap into uh, the things that we're made of, which is just sunlight. It's important. If you're inside all the time, that can take a toll on you. Just go outside, yeah. get in some sunlight, breathe in the air, get those vitamins. Um, it's important. That's why I, I like seeing you go to the beach. Yeah. Because that even the, en the energy of the ocean, just to sit there and close your eyes, you're listening to the sounds, you're feeling it's, it's rejuvenating. You're yeah. uplifted. It's, it's, it's almost like a baptism. You're going there, yeah. you're feeling it. And you know you're soaking in the sun rays, and it's it's a peaceful thing. It's cleansing. And I you think you take the time you hear the symphony. Like mm -hmm. you hear yeah. everything yeah. responds yes. to one thing, yes. and how far it goes out, and how it knows how to come back, and mm -hmm. and it's just order, mm -hmm. like. Mm -hmm. And it's a beautiful thing. Like you couldn't yeah. even write it yourself, and it's like, mm -hmm. hey, this was mm -hmm. created. Yes, yes. I think everybody was created, wonderfully yeah. made, created for their own specific purpose. Like everybody has a journey. We all have a path mm -hmm. and life is about finding your path. It's about mm -hmm. finding what you were called here to do. We weren't just called to go to work and die. Right. We weren't, that's, that's not, we're bigger than that. We're greater than that. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's important, like along your journey to find that, like sometimes it takes mm -hmm. years. Sometimes it takes, you know, you could be 50 years old and, Oh, I finally got it. It's okay. That's, that yeah. was your time to find it. Now you can help somebody else. It's about helping people too. Mm, that's important because that, we're, that's what this we're not about. yes we're not just here for ourselves it's impo yeah. it's impossible that's why I like when I hear the terms like people like to say self-made this that's that's not really real you can't be self-made you always have somebody that you connect with that you rely on we can't do everything ourselves like yeah. the tribe the tribe your community is important so like tap into that so uh Tari says hi Sandala Hey, what's up, Tari? <laughs> and then Tracy, she said, thank you for the positivity. Faith is strong and will get us, get us all through this. Right, she's right. Um, yeah, mm -hmm. I, I went to school. Hey, Tyrone. Tyrone says hi, too. What's oh, up, Tyrone? Will? What's up, Tyrone? <laughs> and um, and I'm, I'm happy that, um, Tracy, thank you for saying that because it's positivity, I feel like, can be um, temporary because uh, we all have moments. Like, mm -hmm. like you and I said, like yesterday was a moment. Mm -hmm. um, I have moments. And I think what the, the, the great part is that we are, don't want to say illuminated or enlightened enough to know when it's a moment that has occurred or is coming. Yeah. Real cool when you could tell it's yeah. coming. Like, yeah. Hey, I need to show hey. it now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but that's also being in tune with yourself. A lot of people don't know themselves. Mm -hmm. so people are kind of like you you see somebody mm -hmm. acting erratic or out of out of character and you're like hey what's going on with you something's definitely occurring they might not know it but yeah. it's important to know yourself and know your triggers knowing things that set you off knowing things Ooh. that's like oh and and being sensitive to um spiritual things too because you can walk into a room and like oh some don't feel right yeah i gotta i gotta go yeah. I got to go work. If somebody wasn't in tune, they might enter that room and a whole bunch of chaos might erupt. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think that there's some of us that, and Tyrone said he needs a cut. He <laughs> said, <laughs> Tyrone, you might want to read. You might want to get it. <laughs> <Yeah. through." laughs> Tyrone, you're running out of time. You're running out of time. No, I, I think, I think I'm going to keep cutting um, probably for the full month of June, maybe July. And then I'm going to just start tapering off. And then Dope. I mean, and, and you got to answer, I think, and that's a part of, growth i don't oh this is good go ahead go I ahead i think that we are life is about growth nothing stays still or stays the same right there is constant movement even if you just look at energy there are always there is always movement there's always movement and so you have to answer when it's time for you to grow mm -hmm. i think that we start having problems when we want to stay in a place of comfort yep yep because it's comfortable yeah, change. But if you get the vision. Yeah, it doesn't mean that it's not going to take courage. Because I mean, mm -hmm. sometimes I get out like I got a new piece of vision mm -hmm. a couple of days ago, and I was like, "Yo, yo, <laughs> you want me to do what?" Yeah, <laughs> I was like, "How come things keep changing?" Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know what? So that's also being obedient too. Because if you know, okay, it's time. No matter how what it takes to get there, you know you got to get there. Yeah. So I think the universe brings in 
people, brings in situation, brings in elements, brings in things that'll help nurture you towards that vision or towards that goal of what you're supposed to be or the purpose that you're supposed to be walking in. Mm -hmm. But that's also being in tune, uh, being conscious. Um, I think gratitude is everything. Like just thanking God every morning, like not only for waking us up, but just for the things that we have, the basic necessities. There's people, no running water. There's people living out of, in their cars right now. There's people, yeah. you know what I mean? It's just simple things to us. Maybe just turning on the faucet is a simple thing to us, but there's people that travel miles just to get water that's not clean. You yeah. know what I mean? So yes, I digress, but. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, being, a, being, a, being a servant of the people, sometimes mm-hmm. it's heavy. Yes. And you have to remember where your lane is for the moment. Mm-hmm. Um, and Tyrone said, constant evolving, um, evolving in perspective, marriage, life, knowledge. Yes. Mm-hmm. I think the moment you shut down that um, and accept things only as the way they are, mm-hmm. the moment you start to lose. Yeah. We, we all know people who are stuck in their ways. Yeah. We all know people who are stuck in 1999. Nice. And that's, that's where they are. And that, that was their prime time. That was their, their life. And they're stuck there and they're not evolving and they're not growing. And they, they listen to the same things. They watch the same movies. They, and it, it's mm-hmm. like, they're stuck. You have to break out of that because you can't grow and you can't help somebody else. Like, yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's, it's, yeah. it's changes. Everything evolving is everything. So um, I saw another uh, interview. I think it was on Instagram, a video of three men three black men mm-hmm. one was 16 one was 31 i saw that you yeah. saw that I, yeah. I think i saw it on your face yeah 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 oh my gosh and the way the pain and the passion mm-hmm. that first of all the 46 year old man looked like he was 56 yeah hard and, life hard yeah. life, right mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. the 31 year old was like look we've been angry for years yes i need you 16 to make a mm-hmm. different decision right to do right. better to do better yeah you may not have the answers today mm-hmm. and i'm going to say this too because a friend of mine i grew so i grew up on the west side of long beach mm-hmm. um we were actually the first to integrate a middle school on the east side of long beach Newcomb. wow what and 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 this is in the late 80s dang that's, late crazy. 80s, right? that's crazy so one of the the privileges that i understand now is i know how to walk on both sides. Mm-hmm. I know how to, you know, I'm got my head on the swivel when I'm mm-hmm. in the mm-hmm. and I got my corporate lingo to get mm-hmm. to, to get things moving, get things done. Right. Still authentically me. Right. And my for my poor people. For right. my people, I think in the beginning and for people, for the spirit of love. Mm-hmm. And so my girlfriend, um, I didn't learn she was Mexican until like maybe seven years ago. Get excited. He was just who she was. Yes. So yes. I had a friend that was Mexican. I had a friend that was white. And it was me and my cousin black. Yeah. And we would do sleepovers and mm-hmm. we didn't know nothing. We just growing up on the west side of Long Beach, right? Yeah. Yeah. So um her now she met and fell in love and her husband has now passed. And she was like, I don't want my daughters to feel guilty for being white girls. Because mm-hmm. that's how they're growing up. And I'm going, You're right, they shouldn't feel guilty. Mm-hmm. I think we all need to be enlightened to what privilege looks like. Mm. Mm. so there's a there's an understanding i think a historical understanding and a awareness and i I think you just continue to raise from there but if Mm -hmm. i can teach my home because i don't want to teach my i don't want to teach my son's hate yes i want them to be aware of what it looks like in the country we live in right what is and, and and tools and tips to navigate as things change right so what, see, what you said, you said, you said something key. You said, I want to start it in my home. Yeah. Um, a lot of homes it, are broken. They don't have that, that, you know, the modern home today looks like what it's, it's, it's a plethora of things. You know what I mean? So there has to be strong leaders within the community. There has to be somebody that can mentor, like mentoring is key. Mentoring is important. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And that's why it's like, it, I'm sad that the schools are closed because sometimes that is the only avenue for kids to get away and get some positive influence yeah. because home, their home life is something that they, is unsatisfying. You know what I mean? It's, it's, it's a place of chaos. So um, you said that and we talked about mentoring about 
um, and we talk about the leadership of the country, and I, I don't call him leadership. I call mm -hmm. him the voice. Yeah. <laughs> I call him the voice. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, but the, the leadership, the actual true leadership have been in office 30, 40, mm -hmm. 50 years. 50 years. Yep. And, and the system that we have set up in this country, let's say like that, mm -hmm. we have to become more strategic of what we're doing and who we're bringing up next. Mm -hmm. Because yep. you got people who, if you wonder why some things ain't changed, but the people who still making the laws still sit yep. in the same seat to vote. So I'm like, okay, there's only so much that black folks can do. Like we already are aware of what needs to be done. I think within our communities, we just need to put those into practice as far as unifying as a people. Yeah. But the core of the system is what needs to change. So mm -hmm. right now we're in the revolutionary stage of breaking down that system. Right. Um, but I think it's bigger than us. There's only so much that we can do because there's forces and oppositions that are pushing us back. So yeah. that's why it, it was, it was really like, I, I was glad to see, um, people of all colors saying black lives matter like that. Like it touches me, you know what I mean? Cause it's like before when we were protesting, uh, Sandra Bland or, uh, the numerous other Philando Castile, the numerous other, um, people who have died behind police brutality. Yeah. Um, it was just us out there mm. saying black lives matter. And then you got people saying, well, all lives matter. It's like, well, all lives can't matter until black lives matter. Cause we're part of the all, right. you know what I'm saying? So, um, yeah, I, man. My Bishop said something today that I reposted. He said, it's not just that, that all black lives, all um, that black lives matter, but are black lives equal to your life. Exactly. Exactly. And it's like, people love black culture. People love black things. They mock and mimic and carry on, but they don't like black people. And that's where it's like, wait a minute, hold on. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like we need those people to speak up. We need those people to, to, to walk with us. You know what I'm saying? You, you feed and, and live off of black culture, but we are people, we're humans. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah. And I think that it goes back to what you said in the beginning of, of knowing yourself. Mm hmm um having a vision for yourself mm -hmm. like what do you want your life your family to look like right and does it does it include others or is it only right. self are you, are you are you just only concerned about only for, right 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 i think it's important for us i think self-preservation is important yeah. knowledge of self is important yeah. and from there i think you can branch off and and, and help other people or nurture other people mm -hmm. um influence other people uplift other people mm -hmm. um we all like you said we were speaking earlier and we all have different roles i think um once you find your role once you find your strong your strong point we all have different roles to play so we form together like i said voltron right so right. you might be the toe i might be the pinky you know what I'm saying? We all have our, our specific part, but it's important. You know what I'm saying? So it's important to find your role and to um, help somebody else so that they can fulfill their role of the, being, being the ankle bone and, and twisting the foot. You know what I'm saying? So we're together. You know what I mean? Like it's, it, but it's important to know your role and to, to fulfill that, I think. I was, I was um, in my thoughts and meditating about love and light. Mm -hmm. And love is not just fluff. Mm -hmm. Love is structure, it's correction, it's mm -hmm. protection, it's comfort. Mm -hmm. Same as light. Light is illuminating, light mm -hmm. is warm, light could be a little hot. Mm -hmm. I light a little too long. Yeah. And so I was having a dialogue with someone, a conversation with someone, and I was basically telling her, if you're trying to get something done, offending people is not going to get it done. <laughs> so maybe you should change your delivery. Mm. Mm -hmm. Now I get you upset, mm -hmm. but uh, the offense and what you're sending out, what you're saying is not going to be received. Are you talking about that man? No, no. Oh, bro. <laughs> <laughs> no, let's go I don't even know. I'm like, thank God that, that journey is over, Spesh. <laughs> it's over. It's over. <laughs> God, but that was a journey in me yeah yeah and and what i recognize is when he tried to come back in my life i was like mm -mm. i'm not the same i'm not yeah. at the level that i was at I'm yeah higher now. yeah change is good and growth is good like i was t i think i was telling veronica i was like i see mostly growth like i was like she's on her way like i feel like this is a platform 
to where like you're about to start your podcast soon. So however long you got to take, if you already got the vision for it, I don't know. Yeah. But let's this is I'm just. Tell you about that. I want to say hi to a couple people. Hey Tyrone. Hey okay. Andrea. Uh, let's see. Hey Erica. Hey Carla. Ooh, we we hit so many topics. And uh, Andrea says she loves that. Her uh, her friends always say form together like Voltron. Yeah. I will always <laughs> go serve and found success. Everyone has a role. Righteous. Yep. Yep. Yeah. That's true. I That's mean, true. woo. Especially. I mean, thank you. And and really. I think I do not detest what um, I, I just, I do not forget the small beginnings. Mm-hmm. I don't forget the pain. Oh my mm-hmm. God. Yeah. And I remember, girl, I saw, I had a post up that I was going to post, but I didn't post it. Mm-hmm. It was a memory. And yeah. I remember where I, the Lord was like, oh, that was just rough terrain. Mm. I was like, wait, hey, wait, wait a minute. <laughs> Die. Yeah, like, yeah. That was just rough terrain. And then he took me to the scripture that says, uh, momentary light afflictions mm. and how they work for you. Mm. And I'm going, and I'm thinking about the journey and how you travel. You may get to a place that's not quite paid yet. Mm-hmm. So your car got a little bumpy. Don't mm-hmm. mean that you stop moving. It's just right. it's just that little that section. Right. And the things that we think are gonna take us out are actually yeah yep and it's like that's like those moments too oh yes oh yes like uh you talk about like scripture okay i'll I'll bring it to scripture terminology like the refiner's fire Mm -hmm. um how is we're constantly being pruned and made and molded into who we are and it's like um you have to enjoy the journey because people always want to make it to okay i see a but i want to make it to z but it's like you have to go through the whole alphabet before you can get to Z. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's, that's that's over there. Focus on here right now, because every day, every step, every change mm-hmm. is part of the process. You know what I mean? It's, it's a process. You know? Yeah. We're talking about so, that on, on Thursday too. Yeah. Oh, part of the process. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um. Yeah, I think. Okay. I think pain is part of the journey. I think pain is important because. Um, it shows you not only where you came from, mm-hmm. but it shows you like what you are able to overcome. Yeah. Um, there, there, there have been moments in my life where there has been extreme pain, yeah. emotional, psychological, physical pain, um, mm. and actually tapping into that and recognizing, okay, I'm in pain. Okay, what do I need to do to overcome this? Who do I need to talk to? I think therapy is extremely important. Yes. I think therapy is extremely important. Getting it out. There's so many people who hold stuff inside and it's very destructive. It could send you on a path of binge drinking or doing drugs or wilding out or being promiscuous or whatever. Um, it's important to realize that it, you, you need help. Yeah. Like, no, no man is an island. We're yeah. not self-made. You know what I mean? And, mm-hmm. and I've had my share of therapy. I've mm-hmm. cried it out. I've, you know, I've been to meetings. I've right. talked on phones and, and cried my eyes out. And that was part of my process. That was part of my healing. Yeah. And when you go through that, you, you feel better. You feel like coming out of therapy sessions, feeling like <sighs> I can breathe, like a weight is lifted off my shoulder. And a lot of times mental turmoil turns into physical turmoil girl you get, say you get, that you get pain in your shoulders you get pain your back hurts like it's it comes out it manifests itself in physical ailments yes. um I, I had battles with uh fibroid tumors for years and years and years um i had two surgery two major surgeries um to where i had to stop cutting hair for like um a couple months and then just was out you know what i mean mm-hmm. in the hospital being in, i was laid in oncology in long beach memorial you know like dang this is where i'm at okay and um to make it through that that, that was that was part of my journey mm-hmm. i didn't wish it on myself I, it wasn't fun yeah. but i know that i'm i'm that much stronger and i'm better because i was able to go through that you know so wow. uh, yeah, yeah then now i have I have that story to to tell to somebody else to help somebody else, um, and it made me who I am today. You Amen. Know? And that's a, so. Tyrone gave some examples of positive affirmations that I'll post on my Instagram also. Okay. And then Andrea said that elemental P. 
because yeah. sometimes we think that alphabet is A through Z. Like, it's a straight line. Yeah. Hey, hey, girl, right. hey, boy, you right. might be loop to loop. You might yeah. have to circle oh, my a couple times. Yeah, if you don't learn, is like pressure. Oh my gosh. You know how many times, like, I don't know, I, I, you go through that same situation or you meet that same person, like, okay, you're dating and you still keep meeting that same type of individual, you're like, wait a minute, why do I keep messing? Who is the same person that I keep messing with? And then it's like, okay, then you got to look at yourself and be like, yeah. what is it in you that's attracting that? Yeah. Because you attract what you are. Yeah. So you got to, that's self-reflection. That's, that's, uh, that's being aware, knowledge of self. That's learning, okay, uh, this is what I got to change. And it's everything, mm. everything is a path. And you, and you have to just, you have to just be aware um yeah Ooh. i heard something um yesterday i was listening to sarah jakes robert and she said uh many things but we're talking about being established in this season like a season of establishment mm -hmm. because i do have the belief that when there is turmoil in the world there are people that are still prospering mm -hmm. people, and um the bible says the people of god i want to say the people that are in, enlightened and illuminated for the good of all mm -hmm. that's, that's the way i'm going to say it Okay. Uh, for those of us who may have different beliefs, but so you get the concept of the understanding mm -hmm. um, that this, uh, this is not the time that everybody falls. Mm -hmm. You know, there are some of us who need to build up. There are mm -hmm. some of us that are being called to another level of depth so that mm -hmm. you can be an example to someone else. Yeah. Yep. That, so that 31 year old man was able to talk to that 16 year old, 16 year old man and that 46 year old mm -hmm. man. Like, mm -hmm. hey, you know, there's got to be a bridge in there somewhere. Um, especially, I know we're coming towards our close, but one of the things I want to ask is some of the people from the last show, what are some books? Okay, can you hear, can okay. hear me? Okay. Yeah, I can hear you now. Okay, cool. okay go ahead. Uh, what are some books that you would recommend? Oh, oh, I read all the time. Reading? Oh my gosh. I, I have a lot of books from different areas. Yeah. I actually have some here. I'll show them to you. Okay. Um, some kind of deep, some not so much. Yeah. I'm actually reading. I'm in Thank the middle you, of it. Wanda. Wanda said good dialogue. Thank oh, cool. cool yeah. Cool, cool. Tyrone said therapy has been the key to his change as well. Man, yes. I, I think I'm going to have to bring my shade back again. We, therapy is healthy. We all need it. We all, and I think um, as you start to recognize those moments, you start giving yourself more grace and kindness to give yourself space, mm. not get pressured up against the wall. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to share, share some books that are good for, um, for spirit and also just good knowledge. Mm -hmm. I'm going to share a couple books that are, are good knowledge. This is, a uh, Poweronomics, uh, the national plan to empower black America. Mm -hmm. um, I'm, I'm in, I'm in, I'm in the middle of that right now, but that is good to so just some, um, group economics just empowering our people. Yeah. Um, this is a really good book. If you can find this book, buy it. it you probably can find it for no, no less than $100 at this point. It's, really? it's extremely rare. But this will break down everything's um, law of needs, the law of prayer, law of morality, self-discipline, happiness, uh, law of time, law of spirit, um, culture, habits, um, self-control, this is a good book. This is called The Supreme Philosophy of Man. Um, I'm going to share one book, but this author, Brandy L. Bates, she is an author. She has a podcast, phenomenal. Her podcast is called uh, Power, Power Podcast. Brandy L. Bates, um, she's dope. She, she posts a new podcast every Thursday, sometimes every couple Thursdays. Mm -hmm. And it's just filled with knowledge. It's her speaking on different topics, subjects, and she's just dialoguing. It's, it's kind of like a sermon, kind of. Kind of, okay. sort of, but she's a uh, native of Inglewood, but she um, All right. has a bunch of books. Yeah, Brandy L. Bates, I recommend her. Um, some quick reads. Uh, feeling, feeling is the Secret is another book, too, uh, by Neville mm. Goddard. Neville Goddard has a couple books, um, but Feeling is the Secret. This breaks it down. It also correlates it to scripture as well. Mm. Um, but just tuning into um, our, our feelings and recognizing like it can either come from your chest or it can come from your stomach. When it comes from your stomach, that's intuition. When yeah. it comes from your chest, that's, that's flesh. You know what I mean? So um, this is a really good book. Feeling is the secret. Okay. Um, yeah. Uh, da, 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 da. And for like business, Think and Grow Rich is a good one. Yes. 
probably you've probably you've probably read that or tapped into it, heard of it. Yep, I have. Um, I believe I have it actually. Yeah, Napoleon Hill, good author. Um, this is a good book. I read this book probably two or three times. Really? Having it, having it all. Uh, mm -hmm. John Astaroth, um, it's achieving your life goals and dreams. It mm -hmm. actually has a section in there where you can write in there. Um, uh, and they also have an audio book too. I first heard it on audio book and I'm like, I want to get the physical book so I can actually read yes. and see what, see what I'm reading. Um, but yeah, this is, this is really good. This, this kickstarted my process of, um, moving more to being more business minded because I'm, I'm a Sagittarius. I'm a spontaneous. I'm all over the place. And I found that I wasn't as organized and right. that kind of helped me to kind of hone in and kind of get my stuff together mm, I, was, I was about to cuss but my stuff it. together <laughs> great suggestions andrea said yes very great suggestions you know i'm, I'm I, I love books yes i feel like um you know the, the the money you pay for someone's years of experience and knowledge yeah it's, it's yeah. really priceless information because you can learn so much like we'll never stop learning so i think the day we die we never you never stop learning you never stop growing evolving like the the goal is to uh, get better every day that's what i always say like become a better version of yourself not necessarily that you're changing but you you're you're becoming a better version of yourself mm -hmm. um because i think that if you're if you're at your at your best you're able to give that off if you're at your best at all times like imagine your your abilities imagine what you can accomplish in a whole day like you know what i mean like if you utilize your time to its ultimate like you can get so much done you know what i mean like i, I wake up at seven in the morning every morning uh I, I i usually work out um i do uh, when i first open my eyes okay i do my i do my meditation um i'll write in my gratitude journal um i go work out and i'll have some breakfast i'll check emails and i start to get into my mode and i make sure i try to have a stable um routine throughout the week and i hate routines like but i discipline myself to yeah. do that because i know that there's there's order and yeah. there's things that can be done when i'm in in decency and in order mm -hmm. so um yeah that's that's kind of what when you're birthed in something new mm -hmm. yeah. especially especially when you are because it, it can't come out of out of chaos you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. everything in the world has order you know what i mean from yeah. from nature to you know what i mean yeah. Ooh, <laughs> you have poured into us i just want to give you some love and tell you, you have poured into me you have poured into the people the people who are going to see this too amazing thank you i appreciate you having me here um, yes yes so uh i want to see any last little comments if i see anything tyrone yeah uh, andrea says daily routine and discipline breed success mm -hmm. and uh mantra and tyrone's bachelor's for um psalms 46 and I think I would encourage people, get a vision statement for yourself. Start writing one. Because sometimes you realize you've just been moving, you have no vision. Mm -hmm. and, and, and thus you keep finding yourself in situations mm -hmm. or not quite where you want to be. Right. So if you actually write out the vision and make it plain. Yes. Yeah. It's yeah. important. And Andrew said can... she loves your spirit. She's going to go back oh. and rewind and watch the beginning. So we're going to say oh. bye to Facebook and say we love you. Love Thank you, you Sandra. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate Debbie. you. Okay, and I'm going to stop the recording. Okay.